I, I, I've been uh, furnished with some details of your work, Mr. Turing, uh, most of which I have to tell you I find almost totally incomprehensible. <laughs> yes, well, it's hardly surprising. I used to be rather good at, uh, uh, at mathematics when I was younger, but um, this is, well, <clears throat> baffling. Ha. Uh, for instance, this thing here. On computable numbers with an application to the Entscheidung problem. Can you tell me something about it? Tell you what? Well, anything. Uh, a few words of explanation, in, in general terms. A few words of explanation? Yes. In general terms. Impossible. Uh, well, um, it, it, it's about right and wrong. In general terms. It's a, a technical paper in mathematical logic, but uh, it's also about the difficulty of telling right from wrong. See, people think that, uh, well, most people think that in mathematics we, we always know what is right and what is wrong. Not so. Not anymore. I, it's a problem that's occupied mathematicians for 40 or 50 years. I mean, how do you tell right from wrong? Yeah, Bertrand Russell's written an immense book on the subject, his uh, Principia Mathematica. His idea was to break down all mathematical concepts and arguments into little pieces and then show that, that they could be derived from pure logic. Well, he, he didn't quite work out that way, and after many years of intensive work, I mean, all he was able to do was to show that it's, um, it's terribly difficult to do anything of the kind. But uh, it was an important book, important and influential. I, it influenced both David Hilbert and Kurt Gödel. It's rather like what um, <laughs> physicists call splitting the atom. As analysing the physical atom has led to the discovery of a new kind of physics, so the attempt to analyse these... Mathematical atoms has led to a new kind of mathematics. David Hilbert took the whole thing a stage further. I, I, I don't suppose his name means much, to you, if anything, to you. No, 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 well, there you are, you see. It's the way of the world. People never seem to hear about the really great mathematicians. But um, Hilbert uh, looked at the problem from a completely different angle. He said, if we are to have any fundamental system for mathematics, like the one... Um, Russell was trying to work out, that it must satisfy three basic requirements. Consistency, completeness, and de decidability. Now, consistency means that you won't ever get a contradiction in your own system. In other words, you'll never be able to follow the rules of your system and end up showing that two and two make five. Completeness means that if any statement is true, there must be some way of proving it by using the rules of your system. And de decidability means... That, well, decidability means that there must exist some method, some definite procedure or test which can be applied to any given mathematical assertion and which will decide whether or not that assertion is provable. Now, Hilbert thought this a uh, perfectly reasonable set of requirements to impose, but within a few years, Kurt Gödel showed that no system for mathematics could be both consistent and complete. And he did this by constructing a mathematical assertion which said, in effect, this assertion cannot be proved. Classic paradox. This assertion cannot be proved. Well, either it can or it can't. If it can be proved, we have a contradiction. And the system is inconsistent. If it cannot be proved, then the assertion is true. But it can't be proved, which means the system is incomplete. Thus, mathematics is either inconsistent or it's incomplete. It's a beautiful theorem. It, it's quite beautiful. I, I think Gödel's theorem is the most beautiful beautiful thing I know. Hmm? But the question of decidability was, was still unsettled. Now, Hilbert, as I said, had thought that there should be one single, clearly defined method for deciding whether or not mathematical assertions were provable. <clears throat> the decision problem, he called it. The, 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 the Entscheidung's problem. Now, in my book on computable numbers, I wanted to show that no one method can work for all questions. Solving mathematical problems requires an infinite supply of new ideas. 
Well, it was one thing to make such a claim. I, it was a monumental task. To, to prove it, I needed to examine the provability of mathematical assertions, past, present and future. I mean, how on earth was such a thing to be done? But eventually, one word gave me a clue. People have been talking about a mechanical process, a process that, that could be applied mechanically to solving mathematical problems without requiring any human intervention or ingenuity. Hmm? Machine! That was the crucial word. I conceived the idea of a machine. A Turing machine, which will be able to scan mathematical symbols. It would read them, if you like. It would read a, a, a mathematical assertion and then arrive at a verdict as to whether or not that assertion were provable. And with this concept, I was able to show that uh, Hilbert was wrong. My idea worked. Yes, I see. Well, I don't, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I see something, I think. Uh, the originality of your thinking is clearly remarkable. Uh, and I'm sure you'll make an invaluable member of our team. Group. Call it what you will. <laughs>